everybody. Okay, there. Um, so we are doing, this is like our monthly newsletter, but we're doing a video with it instead of doing a big long newsletter. And so here we are, it's November and we have December and January and then November, December, January, and then we're done with the DTS. Woohoo! Um, so in the last couple of weeks, we had a couple of things happen. Um, as you know, some of you know, I have, I have malaria, um, and I'm taking medication for it. We're figuring out what will work best and, but I'm doing okay. You can see I'm okay. Yeah. Um, so we're very grateful that we live right next to the Catholic, um, clinic and they've been taking good care of me. We did a mini outreach week. Uh, Jeremy went to Sangha Sangha and he has one really cool story from there that we will tell on the blog. And then um, I had outreach that I did here so the kids could stay in school in Morogoro and so I went around the community here and I have a really cool story for my outreach that I will tell on the blog. So we will do a blog post with both of those stories. Um, and um, the week after that, which was last week, we had, I wrote stuff down um, so that it wouldn't, we would know what we're doing. Um, so anyway, so the week after that we had a teaching on Holy Spirit and it was great. We had two gentlemen from the UK come and had a big release of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Um, learned some new things that we're working on and trying out and um, also got great confirmation about our call to Tanzania and specifically our call to Lindy. Um, we also found out that our long-term outreach is going to be, um, part of it will be in a coastal town and then the other part of it will actually be in Lindy where we feel called long-term. So that was exciting. And so now I'm going to kind of hand it over to Jeremy for a minute um, just to share briefly about um, where we're called to go and what we feel the timeline is going to be on that. Um, so okay. we're, um, we're feeling that our, our uh, mission objective is going to be uh, closer to uh, the south of Tanzania inland, um, specifically Lindi, Providence. Um, <clears throat> we're we're here in Morogoro now. It's kind of I feel like the gateway to get down there. It's kind of the, the picture I have. And since I've been here, I have felt that we're not going to be here that long. And and I've basically said as much. And We've been starting to get more confirmation of that, and then Sarah has kind of very suddenly um, felt that, oh my gosh, we're not going to be here very long. So I, I, I'm not, I don't know the time window exactly, but I feel like we're going to um, expect to move south um, in a shorter period of time, uh, which kind of expedites our. Um, our needs list in terms of you know what you know what we're going to actually require to be able to get down there and, and be able to live and do a ministry down there. Um, one of those things being a car, um, we will need to have a vehicle that can um, accommodate a family of seven uh, legally, and then um, we'll also need, uh, I guess potentially some some sort of uh, you know, uh, home startup package where we would have um, a certain appliances and things like that which we could use. Uh, we can detail that later. We'll put that on our website in the um, support page. But you know we'll you know come up with the lists of, of what we what we feel we'll need and I know um, I know the Lord will bring in a lot of stuff. You know, we need seven mattresses, seven beds, da 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 da. So those things, those types of uh, getting the home started, uh, 
necessities. Um, we had talked about that um, we're looking at in February, we will finish our DTS, and we imagine we're, we have someone here on base that's going to work on teaching us Swahili language exclusively so that we can be fluent. Um, right now we can speak little pieces here and there, but um, we definitely need to work more on that. Um, but we're looking at a time frame for Lindy, probably um, end of spring, summertime. Um, so that's much faster than um, we had originally said as well. To be a little more clear, maybe two months. March, April. Yeah. Our, yeah. Two months inside of, uh, you know, a after the, the outreach, we're thinking maybe in that window. Yeah. Um, so. Because it could be summer here or there. Yeah, it's true. So I, I thank you for clarifying because it is kind of different um, times of the year. So I wanted to um, leading. I just kind of wanted to lead into the issue of support. Um, we wanted you guys to be aware and just be in the know. Um, number one, we are not supported by any financially supported by any specific church. Um, our church. Um, definitely supports us in, in prayer and spiritually, um, but we don't have um, a regular support base from our church or from our denomination. Um, we are here with Youth of the Mission, and the way Youth of the Mission works is that you ha raise your own support. So um, we do have, we, we have had one monthly supporter um, that was giving us $100 a month. Um, and we added another monthly supporter um, two weeks ago, but we lost our first monthly supporter at that time. So we are still at um, $100 a month of support. Um, our monthly support, where does that go? Um, I want you to know that we buy bottled water um, every week. The, we have water that they try to filter here on base. Um, but it doesn't always, we don't always have water and it's not always filtered well, so we are buying bottled water because we've had many tummy issues. Um, so we purchased that, we pay for um, bug spray um, that we need for mosquito malaria prevention basically, um, which is important. Um, we have to pay for transportation everywhere we go. Um, just from here to the other site, uh, YWAM site here, um, to go and come back is 7,000 Tanzanian shillings. Um, and you can look up the, the rates there. Um, so it costs money for us to travel anywhere. Um, we have to use public transportation or ride on the back of what we call a picky picky, which is a motorbike. Um, and we also pay for some food items. Um, there's only fruit available for our family, maybe once a week. Um, there's some a slice of watermelon that we can have with our dinner. But um, for us to have like oranges regularly or anything like that, we have to purchase that out of pocket. Um, and there's also the co medical costs. Um, if one of us gets malaria or gets a stomach bug or has a sinus infection or anything, obviously we have to pay for that. Um, here, so that costs about ten to fifteen thousand Tanzanian shillings for a malaria test and malaria medication. So um, those are all things that we're hoping that we will get enough support that we have five hundred dollars a month in support to support our family of seven. Um, so um, just kind of in your mind, think about if God's putting on your heart, even if you gave us five dollars a month. That's huge for our family. That's water for our family. So um, please be praying about that because you guys are the ones that um, support our family and make it possible for us to be here and do what we're doing. Um, and there are a couple of items. Jeremy mentioned car, um, house items, and also the children's schooling is, a, is, is another cost and visas. Um, those are all things that we have to be raising funds for, saving for, and preparing for um, so that we can stay here. Um, so, uh, I'm saying um a lot. I'm sorry. I say um. It's bad. <laughs> 
So since we have a few more minutes, um, I just want, I said it again, I just wanted to share with everyone what we're going to be able to do when we get to Lindy. Um, a couple of the, the, the ministries that are going to be starting there and things that we're going to get to participate in there. Uh, what am I thinking? I know. Now he's counting on his hand. How many times do you say, oh? <laughs> so, okay. So the things that we are, the kind of ministries that are going to be available. All of these things are things that we do in conjunction with local pastors and the local community. For instance, um, there are... <laughs> you should make a drinking game out of this. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're, mi we're missionaries. No, don't do a drinking game. It's <laughs> so bad. Okay, so providing clean water to the villages where they don't have any. Providing education, um, they are starting a preschool in Lindy on the base where we will be, and hopefully eventually a primary school as well. So uh, education is a huge piece. Vocational schools, so that people have a way to make money. One of the big things here that you'll see is everyone is has their own small business, and so it's very difficult to just get a job and get a regular pay. You have to kind of come up with your own business. And vocational schools make it possible for people to do that and support their families. Um, also, one of the things that we're praying about for our future ministry and what we feel called to do is um, family ministry. Supporting families, helping them um, be financially and economically um, independent, and um, helping with children who don't have families, and also helping parents stay together so that they can keep their children. Yes? One of, the, one of the things that I've realized as we were working with the school, the local school here with our kids, was that the children were exposed to a godly education and then they would go out into the community and affect the community, just the, the children. Um, how that education um, can be delivered to them, it's, it's, it's important. It's not something that I would have thought of or thought of or considered, but it is a really tremendous way to reach the community because they see the effect that the, that education is, is having on the children and then they, they connect it with the fact that it's a Christian education and they come in and ask questions and then we can minister to families. Um, it's pretty powerful in, you know, in terms of the tools. So any way that we can educate any of the people, whether it be you know just educating the children or doing trade schools or bringing people in for sewing schools, anything like that, English classes, computer classes, um, it's a very good it's a very good tool that we can leverage because over the course of time people just will get affected by the Lord and then that in turn seeds the community and people see um, it, they just remark at, at that at how a lot of that those Christians are, are really impacting and it, it changes. And we've also seen um just arriving here, many of the the white missionaries. I know I'm looking at the time. Many of the white missionaries, they um, they they kind of live a life that's a little bit separate from the rest of the community, and kind of just dip into the community. Um, and we feel God's really called us to be a part of this community here, 100%. And so that creates many um, opportunities to share the gospel, but it also creates many areas where we have to really work on our communication and walk out relationship and make sure that we're, um, that we're listening to each other well, and, but the result is a beautiful relationship in the end of that. And so it's been great for us. We were at a crossroads on our last, um, uh, our last newsletter that we were considering pulling the kids back for homeschool and um, because we were walking through some of these difficulties with the kids in the school and 
through relationship we've been able to overcome those things and it's been a wonderful gift and so the children are actually back in the preschool here and um, but we don't know what it will look like in Lindy yet um, that Lindy's a big question mark for us so when we go on our outreach time for two months and we get to spend a month there we'll, we'll learn more about what's available there and what we can do are you making funny faces um, the last thing I, I kind of wanted to say um, is this coming from the US to here there are things that you can imagine in your mind that you can understand like you think you can understand you know poverty or um, challenges everyday challenges you know we understand it in our head but to walk through it and live through it is totally different and um, I can just tell you from my personal experience um, being here, even my experience here, it, it, it's not the same as someone who was born here, um, but we have an opportunity as Christians to share the good news with people, but also meet some very practical needs. And the needs that people have here, like people who are only getting one meal a day, then providing for the needs so that they can have more than that says something very real about our God, that He really cares about your need and He really is going to meet your need. And I didn't realize before coming here, like right now as a family, we are living off of $100 a month. And God is providing and He's taking care of our family and we're very grateful. And I didn't realize how much, even our life before coming here, how much excess we had that we could have given. And when you look at a family that has no food and you can give them food, you realize that we serve a God that is the God of more than enough. And I just wanted to share with you that part of our experience here is coming back to you all and sharing with you that there can be a perspective change and there's a lot that we can learn as Americans from the people here and the way that they live their life and it's amazing the faith that they have and the way they walk life out and so we just wanted to encourage you as well just to be praying what ways can God show you that you can maybe give that you can maybe serve in a different way what areas are you holding on tight to that that you're afraid to let go of because we see people here who you know, have a lot less than, than we do, and they still give to one another in amazing ways mm. and support each other and take care <clears throat> of each other. And so... And they give to us. And they give to us. They come and they give us oranges or they, they know that we might not have something and they come and they share with us and, and take care of our family. Um, so we just want to encourage you, just that spirit of how can we serve one another and how can we take care of one another. Um, so let's just pray for, can we pray for everybody real quick and then, and then we'll let everyone go because that's almost 20 minutes. Father, um, I just thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to speak and to let your work be known here. Um, I pray Lord that you would touch the minds and the hearts of anyone who hears this, um, I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord. Uh, I thank you, Lord, for bringing us into your your call and into your work, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you would continue to bring more people into this work. This, it's a body of work that needs a body of people to to complete it, Lord. And I understand that. I help. I uh, I, I hope. I pray uh, that you just reach out and and uh, help us to to teach people that and. To continue to exhort them to um, uh, to to think out of out of their own head or their own situation, and to reach out as as you're asking them to, uh, in in accordance with your will, Lord. Uh, let's pray, Lord, that you would uh, bless everybody, and uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we'll see you later. Hopefully we'll do another one of these in like two weeks or something. It won't go in the newsletter, but just on YouTube.
Bye. In James it says, So you say you believe in God. You do well. But even the demons believe. They fear. The demons fear God. They know who he is.